much indeed, and welcome to the show. And what a show it's going to be, isn't it, Norman? I wish you wouldn't do that, Gareth. <laughs> do what? That irritating habit you've got of rubbing your hands together on the show, you know. It really drives me crazy. Do I do that? <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, I've never noticed. You know, it must be one of those sort of subconscious habits we've got, like, uh, like the way you pull your earlobe. <laughs> I don't pull my earlobe. Yes, you do. You're doing it right now. Am I? Huh? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Still, it's not as bad as that other thing you're always doing. <laughs> what other thing? <laughs> that is disgusting. What? Do, I do, do I do that on stage? <laughs> All the time, Gareth. God, I never noticed that before. <laughs> you know, it's it's almost as embarrassing as that other thing you do. <laughs> what other things that? Where well, you clip your nose hairs in front of everybody. I do not clip my nose hairs. Yes, you do. You're doing it right now. Oh my God. <laughs> so, you know, there's one more thing I really can't stand about you, Gareth. <laughs> What's that? It's the way you take a banana out and eat it like a pig. <laughs> <laughs> what is wrong with you, Norman? I don't do that. I don't even like bananas. Yes, you do. Look, you're doing it now. What? Well, isn't that strange? I never knew that. <laughs> I'll tell you what, though, Norm. It's, it's not as irritating as the way you take a wet fish out of your pocket and tap it against your leg. That, that really drives me mad. A wet fish? Honestly, I do that. All the time. It's bizarre, isn't it? Yeah. Still, you know, there's one thing we both do, and I really think we should stop doing it. And what's that? It's the way that we walk off stage right in the middle of a... <laughs> So, it's straight along here, uh, hang a left, second on the right, straight on, and you can't miss it. I've got you. Thanks very much indeed. Cheers. <laughs> What's the matter? Haven't we seen a police inspector in his pyjamas before? <laughs> you what? Eh? What did you say? I said, what's the difference between food in this place and pigs will. Oh, so I always say, what's the difference? Oh, you've heard it. <laughs> I tell you, my Edna, she were good in the kitchen. Uh, she weren't a bad cook neither. <laughs> uh, the things she could do with a length of black pudding were no <laughs> uh, Things like that are best kept secret. Uh, Forty years we were married. And all that I've got left to remember her by is an antique pendant. Mine's like that as well. <laughs> That's what old age does for you. <laughs> you know, me and Phyllis used to make love every day for 35 years. Shame you were married to Agnes then, wasn't it? <laughs> you know, Agnes were a good wife. Well, she were too frigid. I didn't think she were that frigid. <laughs> eh? You what? I said Agnes were a good wife, but she were too frigid, you deaf bugger. Oh. We were married five years before I, I could persuade her to do it the proper way. <laughs> Doggy fashion. What, you mean having it in the middle of the road? No! <laughs> Having it in part with her wearing nothing but a leather studded collar. <laughs> oh, I tell you, I tell you, in them days you had to be careful. Never had a none of them fancy contraceptics like young folk yeah. today. Uh, in our day we had to use willpower. <laughs> That's what I keep telling my 15 kids anyway. Uh, in them days. One wrong move and that were it. Ah, uh, one wrong move. That were it, wasn't it? That, that, were, it. Well, right, that were wrong and all right. That were, wrong one, one. Right, that were it. Right. <laughs> that 
that one was quite safe though, that one. Oh, that, that one, that one was safe, <laughs> but, but that one we had to watch out oh, for. That, <laughs> that one dangerous one, that, that one. <laughs> Saturday night <laughs> special, that one, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Oh. Fancy a game of dominoes? <laughs> no, I'm shagged out after all that. <laughs> One aspect of Russia's move towards westernization is shown in their typical enthusiasm for competition. As an example, this is next year's entry for the Formula One Grand Prix circuit. <laughs> George Armitage has been running the agricultural auction here in Little Melbury for over 10 years. He's ordinary, hardworking, and dedicated. But the problem is, nobody has a clue what he's talking about. Yes, it's very interesting. You see, George is a mixture. A blend, if you like, of Saxon idiophonics, Gaelic substantives, and Dorset localisms, which, as any phonologist will tell you, come out as complete and utter bullshit. I record all the sales and purchases, which is quite difficult, but I do manage to get down every word that George says. I haven't a clue what it means. <laughs> The auction is over, and George relaxes with a pint and a chin wag. Hey, they some pump bar chili bitty winning in I suppose if the locals were to take a vote on it. George Armitage would be their representative for the gibberish, drivel, and bullshit party. <laughs> the trouble is, they did. And he is. Oh, dear, Ron. They're jeering. I don't like jeers. I don't like any American sitcoms. <laughs> <laughs> Take a cool bass line at the rhythm of the skins. Some moody piano, that's how it begins. The horns are kind of nice, now we're cooking with gas. Stick your nuts in a vice, and now you're singing jams. <laughs> If you wanna sing a jazzy song, make it up as you go along. Take a tune and sing it. Pick a note then swing it around in your throat till you sound like a goat or a foghorn on a boat. Uh. Jazz is only really trendy. When you make it sound all bandit Is it syncopated? Or am I constipated? You know from the start People think that it's art When you sound like an underwater fart <laughs> Then you can see what a funny bit That doesn't seem to fit the rest of the tune it doesn't scan or rhyme in time, man. If you sound like a scalded cat, then you know that you're singing scat. Scat always sounds the same, like jumbled up foreign names. A Manitoba, pop a cat, a pedal, sounds about Saskatchewan, scum pop. What? I said scum pop. And if you're really pissed, you can even sing a shopping list. I'm so pissed, a gravy grain, just half a cut, a bacon burger, half a pound, a packet of peas. Right, ta 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 to me. So don't give me no lip. Just take this tip from me. Skeptical singing epileptic
practically He said he Cause the really weird thing about jazz Is that it's music that disappears up Welcome. Welcome to this, my home. <laughs> Soon, television will be closing down and going off the air, as they say. But you know, there's somebody out there, on air, broadcasting 24 hours a day. No, it's not Rupert Murdoch. <laughs> no, it's someone who's broadcasting a message of love, understanding and fellowship. And you know, it's so easy to tune into that station. It's not difficult to find, because it's here, inside your heart. <laughs> I've tuned my heart into that station, and now the programs are coming through, loud and clear. Hi, <laughs> <Pardon> mate. <clears throat> what are you doing back? Oh, the game was a washout. Look, I've got a Chinese. Do you want some? Do you mind? I'm trying to do my program. What program? program I told you about. You said you were going to be out, remember? No, I don't remember. What program? This program, the one I'm trying to do now, the one you knew about and don't deny it, so would you please just go to your room? <laughs> go to my room? <laughs> this is my flat as much as yours, you know. Okay, then just keep quiet and let me get on. I don't want to row about it, okay? <laughs> Where was I? Oh, yes, I've tuned my heart into that station. I've... I've tuned my heart into that station, and the message is love. Do you know who that station is? <coughs> That's right. It's God. <laughs> and you know, God is always on air, just waiting for us to tune in. <laughs> yes? <laughs> I welcome God into my flat. Our flat. <laughs> yes, into our flat. And now, he shares our home. Oh, does he? He owes me 16 quid for the gas, then. <laughs> he better get his name down if he wants a bath. <laughs> Very funny. Very funny. Yeah. Yes, once God has come into your, into your life, then I'm sure you'll feel as I do. Feet. Feet. What? Feet off the table, please. <laughs> Thank you. I'm, I'm sure you'll feel... Your whole life has become filled with the milk of... Whose milk did you use? <laughs> no, you didn't. Did? You haven't got any milk left. You must have used mine. Now there won't be enough for cereal tomorrow. Yes, there will. Look, if you've used it for coffee, there won't be enough for cereal. I can't get someone to get up. Well, maybe I don't want my breakfast at two o'clock in the afternoon. <laughs> I do not get up at two o'clock in the afternoon. I don't get up that late, honestly. Yes, you do, you liar. You know. <laughs> liar? Ha! That's rich coming from you. Listen, if you knew the filthy, disgusting habits he's got... Yeah, I'd nick his milk, but I wouldn't touch his butter. Don't oh. you dare say a word. <laughs> and another thing as well, look, look. All this love for your fellow man, it's a load of nonsense, really. He doesn't believe any of this religion thing. He's tried them all. They don't last two minutes, you know. I mean, he joined the Salvation Army once, but he packed it in because he said the tambourine made his knee sore. That's oh. rubbish. That's rubbish. No, no, then he tried faith healing and practised the laying on of hands till he got arrested in Marks and Spencer's. <laughs> right, that's it. That's oh, enough. This is his temper now. He goes crazy here. Okay, watch. then. <laughs> Mr. Goody Goody, let's have a look at your photos from your happy holiday in Hamburg. Aye, then are you <laughs> giving back to me. Then <laughs> what? Get your hands. Ruin my programme. Yeah, well, you're only making it because you fancy the Salvation Army, girl. That's not true. Th that isn't true. It is true. Everybody knows it's true. That isn't true, and just because she fancies me more than you. Oh, <laughs> come off it, Gareth. Nobody fancies you more than me. I mean, nobody what fancies you. What are you, you talking about? Nobody <laughs> fancies <laughs> you. <laughs> sure. The man's a complete lunatic, Gareth. Listen, listen, listen. You know, if you're going to argue with me, have the oh, courtesy yes. to look me in the eye no, and knock down the camera. Look, look at me when I'm talking to you, then. Oh, look, I've had enough. I'm leaving the floor. Don't leave. 
Or at least, not until you get some more milk. getting it ready for flat racing. Look, I ain't never said this to nobody before, but uh, I think my husband's a lesbian. Depth 100 feet. Secure at 100 feet. Maintain revolutions. Maintain revolutions. Warrior oh. <laughs> number one, how's everything going? All <clears throat> shape and Bristol fashion? Is everything as neat and spruce as a cat and patterns, eh? Ha! Yes, Captain, everything's fine. Good, because a ship in fine fettle is a good submarine. Remember that number one, you won't go far wrong in a Majesty's Maritime Submarine Service. <laughs> now, we're underwater at the moment, aren't we? Yes, sir. How far underwater? No, don't tell me. Let, let me guess. <laughs> Are we six feet? Ten feet. One hundred feet, Captain. One hundred feet? Well, that is deep, isn't it? <laughs> Anything more than six feet and it starts my ears popping. Do your ears pop when we submerge, number one? Yes, sir. Whoop! There they go again! <laughs> Still, we're not going to let a bit of ear popping disrupt the smooth running of this submarine, are we? No. OK, number one, I'll take over now. Very good, Captain. Right. What should we do now, then? Eh? <laughs> I know what. I'll summon the steward and we can all have a nice cup of cocoa. Ah! What on earth is that noise? Uh, a torpedo, sir. <laughs> you just fired a torpedo. A torpedo? Well, how exciting. <laughs> Did we hit anything? Oh, nothing that'll matter, sir. Just the Isle of Wight. <laughs> it's splendid, it's splendid. Right, sir. What should we do next, then? <laughs> oh, I know. <laughs> Periscope. We're too deep for the periscope. And we're too deep for my ears, mister. But do you hear me harping on about it like some wittering old woman? If you can't stand the heat, then get out of the furnace. <laughs> and that goes for every man jack aboard this vessel. <clears throat> and that, that goes, goes for every man jack aboard this vessel. <laughs> now I'll tell you one more time, mister. Up periscope. Up periscope. Up periscope, sir. Oh, this is a lot of fun, isn't it? Right. <laughs> mm -hmm. See anything, Captain? Oh, I don't know. I can't quite make it out. It looks like... It looks like a giant white conger eel. I'm getting something on the screen, Captain. What is it? Can't tell, sir. It looks like... It's like a back scrubber. <laughs> a back scrubber and a giant white conger eel? Action stations! Sink, sink, sink! Watch out for that giant white hungry! Yeah. Sink, sink! Watch out for that giant white hungry! Torpedoes <laughs> way back, scrubber up in here. He once commanded a submarine, you know. <laughs> Tuesday. Tuesday. Look, can you hear me? Just a minute. Yeah, that's much better. <laughs> For those of you who don't know, I'm Dave. But I'm not. <laughs> He's not. Jim Dave, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Did go back a long way. Yeah, yeah, from right over there. <laughs> I'm standing here outside the home of Mr. Bill Parker, TV set designer, a man described by some as a creative genius. But I'd like to describe Bill Parker simply as the man who designs the sets for Prisoner Cell Block H. <laughs> Hello there. <laughs> Been expecting you. Come in. Thank you. Ah. 
Well, uh, can I take your coat? It's a uh, mite hot in here. Yes, sir. I'm one of these guys who likes to see a real fire in the grate, you know? <laughs> I'll just hang this up in the old closet. <laughs> closet, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll put it on the bed upstairs. Fine. <laughs> Do you like it? <laughs> Very interesting, yes. That's what I'll do. I'll get us a couple of nice cold beers. They're in the fridge, in the kitchen over here. Okay. Thank <sighs> <laughs> you. Okay. Um, it's a lovely view. <laughs> Take a seat. Oh, thank you. Mr. Parker, when did you first start designing sets for television? Well, uh, back in Britain, I started working on a show called Crossroads. <laughs> Mind you, in those days, money was no object. I mean, the reception area alone cost well over 15 quid. <laughs> when that job fell down, fell through, uh, I worked for a couple of years on a show called Take the High Road. I suppose this is when Australia called, is it? Yeah. I saw the sets on an Aussie soap called Neighbours, and they were much better than anything I'd ever done. I mean, they were using high-tech stuff like blue tack. <laughs> some really good ideas for Prisoner. Oh, talking of Prisoner and Cell Block H, um, perhaps you could tell me, why is it when the prisoners lean against the cell bars, it looks as though the bars uh, bend back as though they're made of rubber? Well, I'll tell you a little secret. They are made of rubber. That's just between you and me, all right? <laughs> Truth, is that the time? I've got to get young Archie to bed. Oh, don't cry, Archie. Oh, can you let yourself out? Oh, yes, certainly. And, uh, Mr. Parker, thanks very much for the interview. You're welcome. Well, the one thing that this government has done is to bring prices down. Last year, I paid £100,000 for my house, and now it's worth £75,000. This is a daffodil. And this is a daffodildo. <laughs> <laughs>